and welcome to the Wellbeing Evolution. As you can see, I am not in office hours uh, and I'm up against a white stark wall. <laughs> I did sort of play around with a few different backgrounds, but to be honest, this was the least distracting and uh, it also makes it a nice kind of clean backdrop for putting any text or images into. This is not going to be like the standard one, but you know, I'm just doing a late night kind of broadcast, so to speak. Um, so why have I made such an extreme statement in regards to uh, the best quote ever for life? Uh, now, that's slightly tongue in cheek because I don't think there's such a thing. There's too many good quotes, really. There's too many titanic figures of the past who have you know, come up with all sorts of uh, insightful, pithy things for us to kind of think about. Um, I suppose, you know, maybe there are some ultimate quotes I, I personally might relate to, but uh, again, I suppose to some degree they're probably personal. Uh, so the quote we're looking at is the quote from a documentary maker, Albert Maisless. Uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name because I've never actually heard him being talked about. I've only ever read about him. The quote being, tyranny is the deliberate removal of nuance. Sorry, I'm kind of... <laughs> tyranny is the deliberate removal of nuance. So there's some automatic kind of immediate things that would arise in our mind, I think, normally. There's kind of implications around what that quote means. <clears throat> so I suppose the most obvious image that comes to mind from that quote is you know, totalitarian governments and regimes, despotism, etc. So, you know, the Nazi party, for instance, in order for them to operate and function, you know, a large part of their propaganda system was to remove the nuance of those that they vilified. So, you know, the Jewish population, the gypsies, the homosexuals of Europe uh, were framed via their propaganda system, via, you know, at the time, radio, uh, posters and, you know, news, etc. And cast them as the, you know, the... <clears throat> the main cause, the main, you know, group that were to blame for some kind of economic downturn, uh, you know, some sort of erosion of the moral and ethical fabric of society and culture. You know, any ills that had befallen Germany were essentially put down to that those groups and almost to the point where some sort of utopia was supposed to be ushered in if they were removed from from the world the world actually um, and you know falling into the party line was the expected norm so you know the nuance was removed in terms of the discussion also you know you're either with us or you're against us and there was no, because there was no discussion, there was no nuance, there was no variation in viewpoint permitted. You know, you had to, you weren't allowed to kind of say, well, you know, I mean, I agree with some of your points. However, you know, that was, that was a no-no. And you equally could say that for other totalitarian regimes. So, you know, Clearly, this sort of communist regime, the Soviet Union, Cambodia's killing fields, etc. The reason it got to such extremes was because of the removal of nuance. You know, the removal of nuance. Uh, you know, making making it kind of a it's us or them. You either you know fall in line with the party. Um, Otherwise, you get sent to the gulag. Otherwise, you get sent to the killing field. So, of course, there's no room for discussion. Discussion being the nuance, you know. Discussion being where we can explore ideas, question assertions, 
and point out flaws in an argument. So, of course, if there's no discussion, you can't do that. And then if the, those that are wielding <clears throat> the kind of authority and the power are just asserting their point, then that's it, really. You know. So, I mean, they're the more obvious manifestations of the implications of the quote. The tyranny is the deliberate removal of nuance. However, you know, we're looking at well-being here. We're looking at mental health. So why have I brought it up? You know, well, the reason I brought it up is because we can do it to ourselves. There's an internal version that we can do. So, well, I mean, the obvious, probably everyday version that's often, you know, seen by many of us is perfectionism in the workplace or perfectionism uh with any task really you know it could be and of course what comes hand in hand with that for many of us is procrastination because if you remove the nuances of what we may ostensibly call failure uh, mistakes you know incomplete kind of versions or, or you know flawed versions of things then we can kind of, you know, we won't do it. You you avoid it. You know, there's an excuse for not doing it. Well, you know, it may be a self-aware excuse, as in I'm afraid to fail, or it may be there's a plethora of other excuses that people can come out with when it comes to procrastination. But that is in, you know, in the view of a sort of perfectionist, well, what do you call it? Model, really, of how to undertake, how to kind of go about, uh, you know, doing a task. Is that the right phrase? Yeah, completing a task, let's say. Um, so, you know, that's that's an everyday version. There's other everyday versions in terms of self-talk, for instance. I mean, if you drop a plate or a bowl and smash it, and you find yourself calling yourself an idiot for doing that. Then what have we done there? Where's the nuance that's been removed? Well, the nuance that's been removed is, one, we're not perfect machines that should, and even machines aren't perfect, let's face it. But there may be many reasons why we've come to drop a plate other than us being idiots. In fact, I, I wouldn't even say an idiot it's not a criteria for being an idiot whether you drop a plate or not you know i mean if we look at it it's there's probably something to do with you know maybe our energy levels maybe we haven't been sleeping well maybe we've had emotionally draining week an exhausting week at work maybe we've had stressful interpersonal uh, kind of interactions that all mount up as a chain of events that we've removed from the kind of the context of what's happened and we just say oh well I, I dropped the bowl because I'm an idiot you know and then of course you can fl invert that and say we do that with our attitude towards others you know uh, we may find that someone annoys us or let's say you're in the street or you're shopping and someone's kind of I don't know, dawdling or blocking your way or taking ages or a till or something. And then people start to kind of, they start to think of them as simply an annoying figure. <laughs> that's, you know, that's it. There's, there's nothing, there's no other kind of nuance literally to, to their character. They're just, that's the only experience I've had of them. Therefore, you know, that's what they are. I mean, road rage is a perfect example of removing nuance to the point that it can result in serious violence. And that's all from, you know, how does it happen? If, if we look at the kind of, the kind of, you know, the mechanics of it. Well, I'm driving a car. Someone else does something in the road that, that gives me a threat 
threatened me in some way. You know, threatened my life essentially. I mean, that's often what you know people have road rage because they they feared for their life in some way, and they may they may not kind of consciously acknowledge that, but that's essentially what it's about. You know, fear is the the ground of of aggression and, and hatred. So then you know the, the consequences being aggression and and uh, serious violence all because nuance has been removed if they did you know if we could have interrupted that that sequence of events stopped them in the car sat them down and got them to think about you know perhaps reflecting on the fact that they'd probably done a similar maneuver before or they've been a bit careless before or they've been young before and, and driven in a careless way etc then it's quite likely that you know I think a large majority of people would you can reconsider let's say their extreme reaction so there's plenty of ways that we can reflect on removing nuance as being tyrannical you know I mean that type of action is literally tyrannical you know in that in that dynamic in that relationship where someone's uh, reacting with road rage they've essentially embodied the tyrant you know so uh yeah there's lots of lots of ways that it can happen and i think we we can reflect and constantly question whether we're doing that ourselves or whether we're doing it to ourselves uh, and i think it helps our own mental health internally to question ourselves in that way and it also helps us in a, in terms of relationships it helps us and i don't just mean close relationships i mean anyone that we may encounter are we removing the nuance of their being in order to kind of somehow because in a in a sense it's it's trying to kind of make things simpler or fit a schema in order that it's kind of more aligned with our agenda you know that's essentially why we're doing it you know it may not be a kind of machiavellian uh, you know sort of plan to wreck the world but it's certainly not open to understanding and compassion towards others so uh yeah i'd Personally, I would encourage everyone to, to reflect on that quote. If not daily, then uh, regularly. Uh, I don't know, once a week, once a month, something that's appropriate to you. Anyway, thanks for listening.